The Old Man and the Sea, <clears throat> part 39. Ay, the old man said, Galanos, come on, Galanos, Galanos. They came, but they did not come as the Mako had come. One turned and went out of sight under the skiff, and the old man can, could feel the skiff shake as he jerked and pulled on the fish. The other watched the old man with his slitted yellow eyes, and then came in fast with his half circle of jaws wide to hit the fish where he had already been bitten. The line showed clearly on the top of his brown head and back where the brain joined the spinal cord, and the old man drove the knife on the oar into the juncture, withdrew it and drove it again into the shark's yellow cat-like eye, uh, cat eyes. The shark let go of the fish and slid down, swallow, swallowing what he had taken as he died. The skiff was still shaking with the destruction the other shark was doing to the fish and the old man let go of the sheet so that the skiff would swing broadside, broadside swing like this, right? And bring the shark out from under. When he saw the shark, he leaned over the side and punched at him. He hit only meat, and the hide was set hard, and he barely got his knife in. The blow hurt not only his hands, but his shoulder too. But the shark came up fast with his head out, and the old man hit him squarely in the center of his flat-topped head as his nose came out of the water and lay against the fish. The old man withdrew the blade and punched the shark exactly in the same spot again. He still hung to the fish with his jaws blocked and the old man stabbed him in his left eye. The shark is still hung in there. No, the old man said and he drove the blade between the vertebrae, uh, yes, vertebrae and the brain. Uh, it was an easy shot now and he felt the cartilage sever. The old man reversed the oar and put the blade between the shark's jaws to open them. He twisted the blade, and as the shark slid loose, he said, Go on, Galano. Slide down a mile deep. Go and see your friend, or maybe it's your mother. The old man wiped the blade of his knife, and he laid down the oar. Then he found the sheet and the sail filled and he brought the skiff to he brought the skiff on to her course. They must have taken a quarter of him and of the best meat, he said aloud. I wish it were a dream and I had never hooked him. I'm sorry about it, fish. It makes everything wrong. He stopped and he did not want to look at the fish now. Drained of blood and a wash, he looked the color of silver of uh, sorry, he looked uh, he looked the color of the silver backing of a mirror and his stripes were his stripes still showed. I shouldn't have gone out so far, fish, he said. Neither for you nor for me. I'm sorry, fish. Now he said to himself, now he said to himself, look to the lashing on the knife and see if it has been cut. Uh, because he lashed the knife to the oar, right? And if, of course, the lashing has been cut, then he's going to lose, lose his knife when the next fight comes. Then get your hand in order because there still is, because there still is more to come. I wish had I had a stone for the knife, the old man said after he had checked the lashing on the oar, but I should have brought a stone. You should have brought many things, he thought, 
but you did not bring them, old man. Now is no time to think of what you do not have. Think of what you can do with what there is. In my opinion, another great lesson, right? Oh, but if I were rich, I wouldn't have to work. And if I didn't have to work, then I would spend most of my time preparing, I don't know, my videos here. And if I were rich, I would travel to some other countries to get to know their culture. And I would do this, and I would do that, and I would do that, okay? Uh, it's okay to do that when you are... I don't know, you are in, in your leisure time, and you're just thinking about what you would do if you won the lottery. But if you look at the situation around you and then you, th you think, oh, if I had money, if I weren't so sick, if I didn't have this, if society weren't so cruel, if, 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 then, then you are not uh, doing what the old man is doing here, you know? Yes, if I had a stone for the knife, yes, I would make it very sharp, but I have this knife here, I have an oar. I have this fish, I'm alone, my hands are all, you know, hurt, and that's what I have to deal with. So I'll get all of that and I'll do something with it. You give me much good counsel, he said aloud. I'm tired of it. He held the tiller under his arm and soaked both his hand in the water as the skiff drove forward. God knows how much that last one took, he said. But she's much lighter now. He did not want to think of the mutilated underside of the fish. He knew that each of the jerking, jerking bumps of the shark had been meant torn away. Uh, sorry, had been meat torn away and that the fish now made a trail for all sharks as wide as a highway through the sea. He was a fish to keep a man all winter, he thought. I think the, the point here, uh, not that the man would eat that fish for all winter, right? <clears throat> but the money he would have gotten uh, selling this fish would have kept him for all winter. Probably this is the season where it's difficult to, to fish, right? Um, so that, that was the kind of fish he's losing now. The bleeding may keep the left from cramping. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I skipped. Uh, all winter, he thought. Don't think of that. Just rest and try to get your hands in shape to defend what is left of him. The blood smell from my hands means nothing now with all that scent in the water. Besides, they do not bleed much. There is nothing cut that meant anything. The bleeding may keep the left from cramping. This is interesting, the way he sees, uh, you know, wounds. He doesn't analyze wounds on the basis of, of how much it hurts and how much suffering it brings. Uh, or they bring, uh, he analyzes a wound as if it's going to bring some permanent damage, you know? So the idea is, oh uh, yeah, my hands are hurting a lot, you know, but nothing important was cut, so I'll recover, no big deal, you know, it's just suffering. And remember, the old man said before, pain does not matter to a man. Uh, So the bleeding may keep the left from cramping. What can I think of now? He thought. Nothing. I must think of nothing and wait for the next ones. I wish it had been a dream, he thought. But who knows? It might have turned out well. The next shark that came was a single shovel nose. He came like a pig to the trough. Trough is, uh, you know, where pigs drink water, if I'm not wrong, and eat as well. If a pig had a mouth so wide that you could put your head in it, so it, it, was, a, it was like a pig. If a pig had a mouth so wide you could put your head in it. The old man let him hit the fish 
and then drove the knife on the oar down into his brain. But the shark jerked backwards as he rode, and the knife blade snapped, like broken, right? Uh, broke, right? The old man settled his, himself to his steer. He did not even watch the big shark sinking slowly in the water, showing his first life size, then small, then tiny. Because, of course, imagine you can see through the water for, you know, very uh, deep. So you would see the fish big, and then smaller, and then very tiny as it sank. Right? That always fascinated the old man, but he did not even watch it now. 